we're talking about that everything has changed since COVID. So everything that you taught, learnt about digital and business has sort of gone out the door. It's why your website and your digital is your weakest link. And I'll tell you why in a moment as well. Why, what the most book direct KPIs are, how to make small inexpensive changes. And today's workshop is about not spending a lot of money on your digital and website, but how to make small changes to get more direct bookings. Why guests book through an OTA? And look, I love OTAs. I think they're the best thing that's happened to the travel industry. But a lot of hoteliers treat them not right. They treat them as their sole distribution, their sole revenue. So I'm going to teach you how to have a bit of a balance. How to easily compete with them. And real life examples of the industry's leading direct booking strategies. A little bit about myself, that was a couple of years ago. I do look a little bit younger now, actually older. Um, I was, uh, our family's been in travel since 1960. My father, Sir Kamala Caruso, and all those funny letters behind these, and OAM is an AM and everything. He was a pioneer in the travel industry back in the 1960s and 70s and 80s in Australia. And you can probably see the passion that's in travel. Dad's still around, he's 93. He lives in Brisbane. Um, he's on his laptop every day. We gave him a laptop for his 75th birthday. And he's destroyed the keyboard a few times because he had an Olivetti typewriter typing like this. So he still types like this and we have to keep getting external keyboards, okay? So he's still around, he's amazing, and uh, you know, Dad, love you. Okay, I've been in the industry for 27 years, um, founded Fast Track back in 2003, and uh, they sort of think I'm a bit of a guru in direct booking strategy as well through my company. This year marks our 10 year anniversary in New Zealand, um, so we are a New Zealand company, we've been operating here, we know the market very well as well. We've got offices, we've been operating in 19 years in Australia, we've got offices in Brisbane, Sydney, and we'll probably open up Singapore next year. We're a leading full service digital agencies, and some of the clients that we have, you can see some of the brands here, some of the, who today, you've got Stanford, Top 10. Top 10's probably our longest serving client, David Ovendale, has been with us for eight years. We've been doing their marketing and digital. Um, scenic Hotel Group, four or five years, host accommodation, ridges, and so on. So we are very travel orientated. So that's probably enough about me. So why is it important to book direct? One, it reduces your commissions to third parties. Two, the direct channel is starting to show a huge growth again. Okay, whereas before a lot of people were booking, people have gone off OTAs a little bit, I think, especially during COVID. Because what happened, they booked for an OTA and it was very, very difficult to get your money back for an OTA. Who booked for an OTA just before COVID? Anyone? and it was quite difficult to get money from them because they're like a travel agent in the middle. So what happened, everyone started coming direct and I'm seeing that that growth is starting to grow even more as well. When people book direct, they're your customers, not the OTAs, okay? And there's always that fine line. They've booked for an online travel agent, but they're staying at your property or using your service. Whose customer are they? Who are they transacting through? So that's why if they transact with you, they are your customers, and that's your opportunity to make them loyal. And again, I see a lot of hotel and travel businesses don't do anything after they have booked. I stay at hotels every week now, and yet they still send me the crappiest email saying, hey, celebrate your wedding anniversary. I'm not married. <laughs> okay? Do they know about me, who I am? Okay? So it's very, very important. Lower cancellation fees when they book direct and they're the higher average booking value as well. So the battle has begun again, and as I said, OTAs lost millions, if not billions of dollars during COVID because no one was booking. So everyone started going back. And what happened, it was easy to outbid them on search. But what's happened, everyone's starting to book again, so they're making a huge comeback. So there's this battle. But can I tell you something very important? Anyone heard of the billboard effect? Okay. People go to an online travel agent because it's easy. When I have not been at a destination before, I actually go to an OTA, I won't say which one, to see what is available. I'm not going to go to 100 websites to see in Auckland where I'm staying. I go there and then what do I do? I go to the hotel website or the car rental website. And this is where I see so many people lose bookings. So it's very important that and I'll go through that in a moment. So question, what percentage of your bookings are currently direct? Is anyone above 80%? Fantastic. 
What sort of business are you? Luxury Lodge, yep. Corporate, fantastic. Okay. How about anyone over 60%? Anyone under 50%? On average, we sort of find that consume uh, a lot of the clients that we start working with and we, we see are about 50% under. To me, it should actually be 50-50, to be honest. Because the new travel consumer has changed quite a bit. And I know I pinched this from Michelle. She, Michelle did a fantastic presentation from Google yesterday. And this is good because the biggest market for New Zealand is the Aussies. And one in two Australians have either done more online shopping or become more predisposed to interacting with brands via online touch points. We've got surveys of people who are under 30 who will never ever visit a retail shop again because they are so used to making a purchase online. And this is the biggest opportunity for you as selling travel, hotels or car hire or camper vans, as I can see some people here in the room, to make a difference. Because to me, we are selling what? Fun, happiness, aren't we? It's such an easy product to sell. And this is the big opportunity for you. And this is another stat from Michelle's um, slides yesterday. That New Zealanders are now spending 17% more time online than 2019. And 21 hours per week online. That's over 1.5 months of the year. We are addicted to these things. okay? And this is the biggest opportunity for you as travel operators, to really make a difference. Because what happened in New Zealand is that a million people say that COVID disrupted their summer holidays. All of New Zealand wanted to go on a holiday, but COVID disrupted. It disrupted my holidays. And I know 10 plus per, per grade in 10 travel domestically in 2022 um, as well. Some Aussie stats. 11 million Australians plan to travel domestically within the next six months, but they haven't said to New Zealand. This is one thing that, you know, hopefully the government over here starts listening to. The average user checks their phone 110 times a day. Really, really addicted users use their phone 900 times a day. Everyone's putting their hand there going, oh, shit, that's not me. Okay. These are stats. Okay. By 2023, hotel supply direct will again surpass OTAs by 2023. So this is your opportunity that if you're not getting enough online direct bookings to really start making a dent. This is from Focusrite, a great research company in, in travel as well. Mobile traffic to all websites hit an all-time high, 80%. At Fast Track, we actually start designing the website on the mobile version first, then desktop. We don't do it the other way around. Okay, so that's why it's important. Mobile, 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 start thinking. And mobile performance is up across the board about 78% and 62% purchases. This is from a software that we call SEM Rush, that we use in our search marketing department, that shows us things like this as well. But what's happened, because everyone, Google indexes your website based on your mobile version of your website. Again, Google indexes, you know how you appear on Google? It doesn't look at your desktop, it looks at your mobile. Point number one I'm going to make today. And what happened, when everyone started using their mobile more, okay, your ranking started dropping. Because if you look at your, how your hotel or travel business ranks on Google, on mobile versus desktop, it's completely different. It's not the same. You have to have two different strategies. Okay, and this is what happened. The percentage of URLs that changed when everyone started going on mobile. 11% kept the same position. 26% moved one or two. 44 moved 3%. 63, 10, and so on. So I hope I'm starting to get thinking mobile, 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 and what you need to start doing. Okay, so we're going to talk about book direct, and this is what a book direct strategy looks like. Hands up who's got a book direct strategy for their travel business. Ah, oh, shit, we've got a lot to do today. Who's got a marketing plan? Okay. Two of my team are up the back. It's called Fast Track. Just call us. No, you've got a lot to do. Okay. One rule that I have, and this is uh, provided to us by some of our clients uh, from your nightcaps of this world, Top 10 is one of our clients, uh, Ridges, where they designed their website, where 
you have to actually make a booking within five clicks. So what I want you to do is I want you to pull out your mobile phone. Okay, don't check your messages or your social messages or you can take a photo of me or anything like that. I want you to pull out your phone. Come on, we're going to do an exercise. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to go to your browser and I actually want, and if you're not from a hotel, you're for a company like, I don't know, yeah, I can see Amadeus up the back, pull one of your clients' websites. What I want you to do is go to your hotel or travel business website and I want you to count how many clicks it takes just before you press the pay now button. How many clicks? Okay, let's do an exercise. Okay? From where you go to your website, so go to Google first, sorry, type in your name of your hotel, make sure it's up the top and not up on page 10, and then try and make a booking. Go, go to your hotel, choose a hotel room, choose what you want to do, go to the booking where you enter your details, put your credit card in, don't press pay, but I actually would. Because that's one thing that we do with a lot of our clients. We actually get them to make a booking. Who's actually made a booking on their own hotel or travel website? Okay. Just count how many clicks it took before you actually pressed pay. Who's over five? Who's over eight? Okay. Who found it really difficult to use their own business's travel website and booking engine? <laughs> Didn't you find it? Okay. Just get a name down the back. We'll have to. Was that a good exercise? Okay. If you are struggling yourself, and I don't know what they call it, um, you know, when you do something so many times, you should actually be really used to doing it. You actually know your website. You imagine people have never come to your website before. Okay. And that's the first thing when clients come to Fast Track, we just pull out our mobile, not our desktop, and try and make a booking. Good websites you need to make within five clicks. Um, anyone here from Ridges QT events here? Anyone? No? I mean, I'll just show you a website that, you know, we did some time ago. This is a uh, company in Australia called Nightcap Hotels, which um, is owned by ALH, which is your Woolworths and Countdown. Um, check in, check out date. You want to go then. You press click. Goes off. Doesn't go to an external booking engine, does it? Okay, it goes off and it shows what's available. Click, availability. Yep, I want to rate, not available. Maybe because I just checked tonight. That's four clicks. And here's the booking summary, sticky menu on the right hand side. Guest details, payment gateway, five clicks. So that's one. Um, yeah, Ridge is also great where you can just go, you know, Auckland, press go, comes up, doesn't go to an external booking engine, check in, check out dates, check rooms. What's available? I only did for tonight. Book now, you know. See how it goes to green? There's little changes. So there's some of the things that we've done. I'll show the top ten later, but... So five clicks. And we've found that one thing that Fast Track has been doing now probably for about seven, eight years is where we actually bring the availability from your property management system directly onto your website via API. We don't provide a booking engine. We don't call a booking engine. We actually provide you what we call a full e-commerce website. And Nightcap is a classic one there that we do. We bring the availability. Can everyone go to this? It's called the Google Mobile Friendly Test. Pull out your phone again. And I want you to go to search.google.com slash test slash mobile friendly. Sorry? So, or just type in Google mobile friendly test. Because what we're going to do, we're going to see if Google likes the mobile version of your website. So search Google mobile friendly test. Once that page comes up, I want you to type in the website of your business and then press Analyze. Test URL. We're going to do another test. See, this really bothers me, is the loading speed. So we're going to go now to type in Google Page Speed Insights. And again, type in the name of your mobile. 
because now Google's going to tell you how quick your website is based on their standards. Because this is part of what the developers in my, my company use, but it's open to anyone. This is free. Okay. Has anyone got results from their analysis? Ten. I heard ten. I heard that. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit. This is ten. Fuck. Anyone else? Twenty-four. Thirty-four. Anyone get 80? I can show you a website that does 90. It's one of the websites we built because this is what my developers use before it is launched. So if you've got a good web development company that's working with it, today's not about fast track. I'm just giving you what we call best practice and giving you examples. And my developers, I challenge them, before they launch the client's websites, they have to get 80 plus, even if it's reducing the size of the images, putting it onto a fast server. Good idea? Okay. But then what you should also do is put in the URL of your booking engine. That's your website. Because I assume that everyone in here, you've got an external booking engine, is that right? You pop off to someone else's booking engine? Okay. See, what happens is that 53% of consumers abandon a mobile site if it takes longer than three seconds. If your website takes longer than three seconds, half the people say, you know what, I'm going somewhere else. A one second delay, this is really important, this is from Google, a one second delay in the load times of your mobile version of your website can impact conversion by 20%. And some people that we've worked with, they've given us a website that we didn't build. We put them on our servers. We use Amazon, but we use a special type of Amazon. We've increased their conversion rate just by doing that. So again, go back to your web development company and ask them, hey, look at the page speeds. We need to increase it, I bet you. And then also get your booking engine and put it through this test as well. I love data. You know, my father said, and he still teaches me a lot of wisdom to this day. He says, what you can't measure, you can't control or manage. What you can't measure, you can't control or manage. And that's why I'm an absolute nut when it comes to data. Okay, who knows the conversion rate of their booking engine, not of their website? Okay, who uses SiteMinder? Who uses TravelClick in here? Okay. Um, what's some other ones? Seekum. Um, RMS. Interesting. Okay. Do you know what the conversion rate of your booking engine is? Anyone? Okay. Why? Why don't you know that's the most important part? That's probably why you're not getting bookings. You really need to start assessing your booking engine. Very, very important. And the other one is, do you know the conversion rate of your booking engine on mobile? Everyone's on mobile now. Everyone's working on mobile. So if you don't know, go back to your booking engine provider and find that out. Or go to the digital agency you're using, get them to set up their e-commerce correctly so it actually gives it to you. Okay? So the hotel industry... Well, do you know what the hotel industry average is on websites for conversion rate? From, by, from where they enter your website until they make a booking on an external booking engine. It's about 1.3. We try and get to 3 to 4%. That's if we have to build a booking part or we recommend a different booking engine. We've changed booking engines for clients and we've doubled their conversion rate. Is this sort of making a bit of, everyone's like looking at me really funny. <laughs> it's just basic stuff. And it's basic data and KPIs that my team use in day in, day out from the developers that I have to say, hey, you have to get 80% page speed score to your conversion, knowing your numbers. So go back to your booking provider. Go back to your digital agency. This is so important. Very, very important. Because this is where people pay and give you money. Okay? Okay, so if you don't know how to work out conversion, it is total website conversion, direct bookings by, by total visitors multiplied by 100%. The other KPI my team use is... How many do you know the amount of visitors that go to your booking engine? 
from your website. Number of searches by number of visitors by 100. The other most important conversion rate is, so the industry average is 35 to 55 percent. Okay, so people that actually go from your booking, from your website to your booking engine. This KPI is important because it's like, okay, you know what, you could be losing them on your website, you could be losing them on your booking engine. If you're losing them on your website, you need a new website. Your website has to lead people straight into your booking engine. That's what our UX, UI designers do if you want to use an external booking engine. We have to make sure that wherever on the website they flow straight into your booking engine. The other one, how many people entered your booking engine and converted to a booking? This is the alma mater or whether you need a new, web, a new booking engine. How many people came to your booking engine and converted into a booking? Your booking engine provider should have this or if someone's built the booking engine, like we do, it's all in Google Analytics. Okay, one of the highest converting websites we actually built is about five, I won't, between five to six percent. That's Nightcap, I won't say what Ridges is and all that sort of stuff as well. So, Okay, so make sure, this is what we do with top ten. We actually pull in, you know how sometimes you see five rooms left, five, you know, you think it's not right? We actually do this for top ten because we pull straight from their PMS. One room remaining, very popular now, all sold out. We built this website about five years ago and we keep refining it with David Ovendale and Chloe down in Christchurch all the time. And by putting these little things in there, we've increased their conversion. I won't say what it is. It's confidential information. Okay? But these are the sort of things that we can do as well. And if you become a member, you save $40. So we've, we've integrated their website with their loyalty program okay, with their booking engine. Pop-ups. I hate pop-ups. Can I tell you, but they work. <laughs> okay? Pop-ups work. Ever heard of exit pop-ups? You know when you're about to close your website and it says, hey, we'll give you more money? We work with Apollo Camper Vans and we put a pop-up. We had a, an issue where a lot of people were about to complete the booking page and then they left. And then we served them a pop-up. As their mouse goes in the top right-hand corner, it came, hey, we'll give you an extra 15%. Increase their conversions by 29%. This is all really inexpensive stuff that can be done. Okay, so pop-ups, I like them. All right, analytics. Who has Google Analytics on their website? Okay, guess what? Next year, 30 June, Google Analytics is gone. Google, Google uh, this, they're not going to have it anymore. You have to get onto Google Analytics 4. And we had a ma major scramble in our company because we had to convert a lot of our clients to Google Analytics 4 before the end of June. You know why? So we can actually have year-on-year -year data. But guess what? A lot of booking engines haven't even gone to Google Analytics 4. So push your booking engine to get onto Google Analytics 4 because you've got 11 months because then Google Analytics, Google, the one you've been using for 20 years is gone. So make sure you're on Google Analytics 4. Again, if you don't know about this stuff, come to me, come to my team members, and we can certainly help you with this. Okay, this is the dashboard that we sort of give to our clients 24-7. And it shows things like website bookings, website revenue, conversion rate, organic revenue, and pay-per-click revenue. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about leakage now. I know it's a very bad word, but we're going to talk about your booking funnel leakage. I believe, again, one of the first things, again, that we look at is your booking visualization funnel. Because I can bet you now that you are leaking direct bookings. And it looks something like this. This is in your Google Analytics. This is free. Again, a good digital agency should have this set up for you, like Fast Track. Because this, what this does, it shows you how many people entered via search. How many people entered their booking details once they've gone to the booking engine? How many people chose accommodation? How many people paid and then how many booked? Because guess what? If all of a sudden they're not proceeding here, it might be an issue with your payment gateway. If they're not proceeding here, it means that it's a problem with your booking engine. This is very, very important. It's called the booking visualization funnel. It's free, it's in Google Analytics. Any questions about? Because when companies come to us and say, look, we want more bookings, 
one of the first things we look at. Where are you losing bookings in your whole funnel? The funnel is, where are they coming from? Are they coming from Google? Are they coming from paid meta search email marketing? Are they coming from social media? What are they doing once they get into your booking funnel? Which is from search to booking to booking engine to payment. We've changed payment gateways. Okay? And we've doubled conversion. We've changed booking engines. Okay? Simple stuff. Any questions? Is this all right? Good stuff? So 39% of website visitors abandon the travel booking funnel during the browsing phase. So they're looking at your website. Your website should organically, see we read a website as an F. We read left to right. I think in China somewhere, I think they read right to left, I think. I'm not sure. Okay. So the most important part of your website is in the top left hand corner and the right hand corner. Have you notice how a lot of maker bookings in the right hand corner? What we're starting to do is put that search thing. Do you see the one in um, what we did there for Nightcap and Ridges? We put the actual search bar in the middle. When we put the search bar straight bang in the middle of the page, because it appears in the middle of a booking uh, of your website on a mobile, people don't even go anywhere else on the website because all they want to do, they want to come to your website because they've been to an OTA already. And they come to your website, all they want to do is search if you've got availability. So make sure your website flows as well. So as I said, what to measure? The amount of revenue generated by our channel as well. Conversion rate. Front end, mobile versus desktop. Booking engine, mobile versus desktop. Bounce rate by entry page. Very important. How many people are coming to your website and then bouncing off? They're going away. Return on ad spend is another very important metric that you should have. So, one in two New Zealanders under 55 are using Google search to research initial ideas of what they might need. And it's quite important. So, okay. Hands up who's doing search marketing in their business now. Is anyone doing organic SEO? Anyone doing pay-per-click? Okay. It's time to change and review things because everything that was relevant probably two years ago has changed as well. So make sure that you review and update all paid search engines. We're still finding a lot of people haven't refreshed their ads for over a year or last two years as well. One good thing that's happened out of COVID, it's actually made a lot of hotels realise and travel businesses markets that they've never ever thought they could attack or, or could actually be valuable to them. So this is time to really start refreshing everything. Refresh your imagery. And this afternoon, I've got a really great hotel photographer, Mara. And he'll teach you a lot about whether you do the photography yourself or get someone else or he does it, the value of imagery. We are all visual, aren't we? I can't stress the importance of images. We have changed images on people's websites, we've improved their conversion. At Fast Track, we won't build your website unless you've got good images, because all the website is is frames. That's all it is, really, about it. So become more local, and that's one thing with COVID taught us. Again, it sort of brought out, um, made realize that there's a lot of local markets that we never ever thought of. I mean, we work with um, a, a hotel group in Canberra, and um, they never realised markets now for their weekend that they never thought, because in Canberra, being the capital of Australia, it was all the government when Parliament was on. So, I mean, COVID's really done well for a lot of things to make us realise different things. Build more local citations, which means become more local, get backlinks as well. SEO is free, and, you know, I, I haven't got a case study, but I can tell you a little bit about one. A lot of people stopped their search marketing when COVID. Look, fast track, we got affected. You know, we had nearly 30 staff and every second phone call over two weeks was stop marketing, stop marketing. We didn't lose any clients. People just suspended their marketing. A lot of them suspended both SEO and paid per click. I agree, suspending pay per click in COVID because people were clicking but not traveling. But of the few clients that stopped SEO, the ones that continued, so SEO is how Google ranks you for free. Not the paid ones, it's how it ranks you, it's free. So people that continue their search marketing over the last two years, 
They're Google authority. So Google gives you an authority ranking on how strong your website is on Google. Everyone stopped their SEO. Some of our clients who continued over a two-year period, all of a sudden start getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And now, everyone I started their search marketing, they can't catch up. And we're talking spending maybe a thousand bucks a month, 500 bucks a month, just to update your website, fresh content, do some more backlinking, make sure it's you know, quick as well. So again, if you haven't done SEO, we can do it. We can do an SEO audit for free for you and let you know where you are. And SEO is free because it's Google's way of listing you for free. Very important. Apply negative keyword, keywords. A lot of people, I see a lot of search marketing still mentioning COVID. So apply negative key, keywords so it doesn't really come up anymore. Hands up who uses MetaSearch. MetaSearch is, you know, when you pull up, this is one of our clients, Scenic, their Heartland Cot, um, Hotel Cotswold. Have you ever seen this part of Google down the bottom? Okay. And it comes up booking.com, Expedia. Did you know that you can actually come up direct, uh, so the link goes direct to your website? This is what meta search marketing is. So you can see here, Heartland Hotel, Cotswold official website. So make sure that you have some good, decent meta search going where on that list with all the other OTAs, you appear as a direct link to your website. Good idea. And it's not expensive to do. Very, very important. So make sure you adjust mobile bid modifiers. Why? We're on mobile now. Okay, so if you are doing a meta search, you're using a company, as I said, we do meta search. Um, make sure that your bid modifiers are adjusted to increase on mobile, because everyone's on mobile. Leverage calls to highlight special messaging, work closer with meta search partners and publishers, update itinerary strategies, confirm price accuracy, and I'll talk a little bit about rate parity in a moment. Monitor key data points, and use, there's so many meta search engines out there. So start off with Google, and then there's some other ones out there. TripAdvisor, their paid ads is, is MetaSearch Expedia as well. So, Okay, if you can't afford uh, pay-per-click, make sure that you spend at least $100, $200 a month on the name of your brand, to bid on your brand. You can actually outbid your, the OTAs on your branded keywords. Because when people are searching for your hotel name, guess what? They're further farther down the booking funnel than just typing in Auckland Hotels or Christchurch Hotels. So when someone says to us, oh, I haven't got much money for pay-per-click, do this as the bare minimum. Cost you a couple hundred dollars to set up. Throw $200 in a month, so at least you appear above the OTAs. Good idea? And it's actually very cheap because people, when they search for your hotel name, they've either received an email, they saw you on social media, or they've already been on an online travel agent. A couple of hundred dollars. We can help you set it up if you want as well. Google hotel ads is also very important. Don't forget that. So make sure you're on a Google hotel ad platform so you appear with all the others. Make sure that, I think Michelle was talking about Google's hotel booking links. It's free. So you can actually go into your Google uh, account, edit profile, and manage your rates. Rate parity. And, and it's, this really knocks me. It really upsets me. And I still see it every day. Where I go to an online travel agent, go to the Hotel Direct, and the Hotel Direct is more expensive. 27% of time, hotels and companies are being undercut by OTAs and third parties. They're going to they're start doing it. If not, they're doing it again. What do you do? Does anyone know what to do when that happens? Give them a call. Cut that distribution channel out if you have to. Okay. Revisit your contract with them. They're probably selling your FIT rates. Okay. So this is time to actually re re renegotiate your contract and say that they can't outbid you. Is there anyone happening to anyone here in, in the room? Okay. Sort our area of specialty at Fast Track, but it's really just have a look at your contract. Have a look at where that rate is, and it could be a rate that the OTA, OTA has got from one of your FIT partners that they should be selling with any or something else as well. But there's a great company, you know, OTA Insights, they can give you an alert straight away 
um, if all of a sudden you are being undercut. So make sure, because this is another big factor on getting direct bookings as well. So what to manage? Do your research. Monitor online. Can't recall how much OTA Insights is. about 150 bucks a month. It's so worth it to do it. Revisit all your FIT and wholesaler contracts. Create a process where you discover a rate priority violation from a wholesale rate. Ring them. Tell them, hey, mate, try and make a booking of your rate that's cheaper and see where the voucher comes from. And then present it to the OTA or the hotel and say, hey, what, you're not supposed to be selling this rate. It's time to start taking control. Be agile with your rates. Don't forget it and set it. Perform fencing and distribution reviews as well. So, Reviews, um, I can't probably tell you how important getting reviews is. Um, and look, 80% of people go to the internet first when researching. I do it. When I've never been somewhere, I go to TripAdvisor. I go to Google and see what the reviews are. When we've helped hotels improve their reviews, it's improved their conversion rate. I mean, this is quite interesting, isn't it? The most influential channel on travel decisions is reviews found on websites like TripAdvisor. So now it's really time to send. Who sends out a, a, a feedback form after someone stayed at their hotel or, or bought something? Very important. There's some good systems out there to do it as well. So, You know these little dots on Google? Who, re who really takes note of them when going to a restaurant or something? Okay, guess what? So are consumers about your hotel. So when you ask them to do a review, don't get them just to do a review on TripAdvisor. Get them to do a Google review. Because when you've got better ratings, I don't know what their algorithm is, but I've noticed that the hotels with better, more stars of these appear higher in Google. It's all relative. So don't forget the power of Google reviews. We use it for restaurants, everything, judging businesses. Consumers now are becoming more trained to actually to look at your actual Google review star rating. And it helps you get much higher as well. Okay, book direct. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I think, still think that when people come to your website, there should be an offer. Why should I book direct? And if you've got a good pop-up system, it'll tell you how many people click a uh, pop-up, go to your website and make a booking. Data, data, data. So important. Social media. Now, I get a lot of people asking, is social media worth it? I can't tell you how powerful it is that it's starting to become. And in New Zealand, look at that. How it's increasing year on year. The presence of social media. How many New Zealanders are starting to use it. Because we are addicted to our phones. What do you think is the top social media channel is in, in New Zealand? What's number two? YouTube. Videos. Get a good videographer. Get a video of your hotel and take it into snippets. YouTube, and during COVID, we consumed so much video, it was scary. What's happened? We've become habits now of YouTube. Who wants to do marketing for free? How much does it cost to, do, to send an email? Zero. Who does email marketing once a month? Guys, give us a call, honestly. You have to do it. It takes nothing to send an email, okay? But it's the cheapest marketing channel for return on ad spend, without a doubt. 800 to 1,200 return on ad spend. But don't send out one email to everyone in your database. Why? That's called spamming. So when we send out an email, we send out... One email, but different parts of the email are based on who is in our database. And we find out their open rate doubles and triples. You all have a property management system or a reservation system. Okay? Let me get into that database and I'll make that turn into gold. Very easy. If you've got nothing to say, I've got some contact experts up the back as well. Okay? Email marketing. Can I tell you, one of our clients in Australia and here, when COVID happened... They just kept that name alive via social media and email marketing all the time. Email marketing costs nothing to set up. Use a good CRM. One of our preferences is Revenate, where the Revenate's official partner in APAC. Um, great system. We can pull things out of there that it's incredible what we do. And it's quite, quite inexpensive to do. Okay. Gift vouchers. Can I, any, hands up who sells gift vouchers and Edwin from Star is going to do it. Again, some of our clients during COVID survived on selling 
three, four hundred thousand dollars worth of gift vouchers a month using email and gift vouchers. Because everyone was aspiring to travel during COVID. Guys, get into gift vouchers, and Edward from Star will tell you a little bit more about that as well. Okay? Very important. Give the gift of travel, people dreaming of travel but still not worth travel. Start off with your data, honestly. Um, it's very important. Um, as I said, that's the first thing we do. We look at your booking visualization funnel. We look at your analytics. When people start working with Fast Track, we say, can we have access to your Google Analytics or why? We'll sign an NDA, but that's where we go first. When you go to a marketing agency, they've got these packages of gold, silver, the SEO. We start off with your data. Why? We need to understand where your traffic is coming from, what your conversion rate are, and that's the KPIs with it. So, Yeah? Yes? Sorry? Text, SMS? Um, I, we don't do that. Um, so we, we haven't done much marketing on text. You have to be very careful. I know in New Zealand, in Australia, um, you can get fined for a lot for sending unsolicited text. Um, we have questions, how far back, someone wants to start email marketing, how far back should you go in your database of people who've booked with you? What do you reckon it is? A couple of years? About 12 months. You can get caught bad out of it. Okay? So, all right. Okay. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.